Have you ever driven by the giant peanut on Highway 231 in Dothan and wondered, how did the home of the National Peanut Festival end up here? Or better yet, how did the peanut become such a large part of the American culinary and cultural zeitgeist that there would be a National Peanut Festival anywhere? Let's talk about peanuts, how they got to Alabama, and why they're sticking around. The peanut wasn't always here, and its journey to becoming an Alabama power crop and beloved American snack food is a long one that starts far away and centuries ago. In the 1960s, scientists were able to pinpoint the origin of the cultivated peanut as eastern Bolivia and South America. And that makes sense because in neighboring Peru, archaeologists discovered terracotta jars filled with preserved peanuts in prehistoric burial sites dating as far back as 1500 BC. Later, in the 1500s, Spanish explorers encountered peanuts on islands in the Caribbean and as far north as Mexico. From there, they made it back to Spain and were exported by traders and travelers to Africa and Asia. Finally, some peanut crops probably made their way to what would become the United States from those same explorers or African slave traders, while others likely arrived from settlers and enslaved populations brought over from the Caribbean. And since slave labor also did so much of the cooking in early America, the peanut started making its way onto a lot of dinner tables over time. But why did this little groundnut go on such an expansive world tour? One, unshelled peanuts were great provisions for ships because they did not spoil easily. Two. Unharvested peanuts served as great feed for pigs and other foraging livestock. Three, they were inexpensive, calorie dense, quite tasty, and sometimes used as a substitute for cocoa. And this third point is how the peanut became so popular in New York City. New York City! The earliest documentation of peanut cultivation in the U.S. places crops in the Carolinas drifting as far north as Virginia. By 1787, a small trade in peanuts was carried on between Charleston and New York. There, unshelled peanuts were sold by vendors who roasted and sold them on the street. By the mid-1800s, they had become a popular snack food with theater goers at the Bowery and were sold by street vendors and store merchants alike. Demand began to increase and southern farmers were looking to get in on the action. But here in Alabama, cotton was still keen and few farmers had interest in giving up a crop that had proven so lucrative over the years and processing harvested peanuts was still quite difficult. Enter the Civil War. When the war broke out, the peanuts value was enhanced. Northern blockades prevented the flow of goods to the South, so peanut oil was used as a lubricant for heavy machinery in the place of whale oil. Peanut oil also became a replacement for lard and olive oil in many food recipes. Union soldiers stationed in various parts of the South developed a taste for peanuts, which they took home with them after the war. But even as the popularity of the peanut, its flavor, and its other uses kept growing and growing, it was ultimately a tiny little bug that changed everything for the wiregrass region of Alabama, the boll weevil. The boll weevil had a terrible effect on Alabama's ability to grow cotton, with the initial infestation resulting in losses of up to 75% of Alabama's cotton crops. Meanwhile, the famous scientist and educator, George Washington Carver, was working to show the United States government, farmers, and anyone who would listen, the versatility of the peanut as the main ingredient in a wide variety of products. Farmers in the wiregrass region took note, and because of the region's particular kind of sandy soil, peanut crops thrived and saved local economies in southwest Alabama. And now, approximately half of all peanuts grown in the United States are grown within a 100-mile radius of Dothan, Alabama, home of the National Peanut Festival. <laughs>